Going to start, though, with a game that could have a huge bearing on the WSL title race. It's been a season with so many twists. As it stands, two teams are chasing a treble. One is after a double. Four teams could still win the title. It'll be a blockbuster game, won't it, as Arsenal face Manchester United tomorrow night. Look at this. Just three points separate the entire top four ahead of kickoff with Arsenal, uh, United leading Arsenal in third and in pouncing distance as well. This is going to be a topsy-turvy game, back and forth, um, and it's going to be about who can manage themselves in the moments. And I think if we can do that, then I would love, and absolutely love, the, to, to do the double. But it's not about that for us. It's about focusing on the performance. We love watching football because it's like a theatre of a show, isn't it? It's about a show and it's about performance. Well, actually, well, our players are no different. We want them to perform, so go out and enjoy the show. Enjoy being in the middle of the show because in your career you don't have it for that long. It comes and goes like that. So for me, enjoy the moments that we've helped create, enjoy the pressures of the situations that we've helped create and take control as much as possible. The rest is then in the, the, the lap of the uh, football gods. So that's Mark Skinner. Let's hear what Jonas Adevel has to say ahead of this huge game. We'll begin here at with James from Sky. Thanks. We'll start with Kim Little. Good news and bad news, but let's begin with the good news. A new contract. How pleased are you to, to have her extending her stay here? <coughs> yeah, of course, delighted for that. So long term, that's very good news for us. Uh, she's just such a massive part of the culture that has made this club successful and in my eyes also will continue to keep this club successful. So uh, delighted that she stay. You mentioned the culture. How important is her role off the pitch as well as on it? Yeah, I think it's impossible to separate uh, because the person she's on on the pitch with uh, setting those standards, both on ourselves and the others, uh, constantly having this high consistency in her performance, it comes from what she does out out of the pitch. And, and when you combine these two things, uh, that's why she's setting so many clear examples to be a leader for uh, for this group. She's 32, I think. How much longer do you feel she can go on at, at the top level? I, I always think that's very, very hard to, to say. I mean, I, <clears throat> I was fortunate to work in, in Sweden with a player like Caroline Sega. Uh, who is uh, almost uh, close to her 40 years old uh, now. And uh, I mean, she, she's been a top player for, for many years. I think if you if you take care of yourself, if you have the motivation to, uh, to keep chasing those percentages every day, uh, age doesn't necessarily have to be a limiting factor, but it requires a lot. It, it's not for everyone. You need to both have the motivation and, and the talent, but Kim uh, at the moment definitely have both. You've lost Kim Little though for the rest of the season. How big a blow is that at this crucial moment? And how do you go about filling that void? Yeah, of course, it's, it would hurt any team to, to lose a player like like Kim, but we have managed so far during the season uh, to, to handle absence uh, from, from many great football players and uh, we need to show that adaptability again uh, and keeping the key principles in, uh, in the way we play, but of course adapting the, it to the individuals that now need to play for us. Is Leo Williamson likely to step up and continue in midfield to fill the role left by Kim? She's definitely one of the options, yeah. Do you feel you've got enough options in that respect now? As a coach, you always want more options, <laughs> but uh, we have a lot of quality in uh, in our squad, uh, and um, I, I have a lot of trust and belief in the players that we have, and I also believe that that's where our focus should be, on what we have and not on what we not have. You mentioned the, the injuries, Raphael, Leah Williamson, Beth Mead, Vivian Medema, four huge setbacks this season. Is, is the way you've responded testament to the character of this team? And is that what you need again, once more, this siege mentality almost? Yeah, and like I said, adaptability. Um, I think what is, it's opportunity for, for players to step up and, uh, and show their qualities. Uh, it's, it's a sentiment to, to the work we do to prepare players for being ready uh, when, when the opportunities arise. And uh, 
I think not only between games but also during games. This group of players have responded very, very well uh, in tough situations, in, in tough moments. Uh, we stick together, uh, we keep to the plan, we believe in the way that we play and that's going to be just as important, if not even more, here at the end of the season. Can you put your finger on why you've had so many injuries? Uh, it's a boring answer, it's multifactorial. Um, I mean, the, the injuries that, that we have had is, is, is very different. Uh, <clears throat> we look internally, uh, of course, and we compare to, to previous seasons and uh, so on. Load and number of matches played is, is always the two major components. When, when you look at, at injuries, uh, there's been a lot of talk this season about the congested um, uh, match uh, like fixtures uh, in, in women's football uh, with being major tournaments here now every summer and very little time for the players to recover so I think you can look at more clubs than, than Arsenal that is playing in international club level competitions that has had a f too many injuries this season and uh, that, that is something we will we will need to, to learn from and, uh, and do better for, uh, for the seasons to come in, in order to keep the, the players healthy and, and on the pitch more. Yeah, talking of the schedule, it's Manchester United Wednesday, then Wolfsburg in the Champions League on Sunday. How tough for you to manage that quick turnaround? And is that a fair schedule, do you think? <coughs> I think it depends on, on how you look at it. Um, of course, you need to play both in in the league and and in the Champions League. Uh, I, I find I find it very odd that we are the only team uh, of the two English teams that are qualified for the semi-finals that are forced to play before our uh, semi-final. Uh, I, I have a really hard time getting my head around that because it's almost like you want one of the teams to have a better chance to succeed than, than the others. But like I said, with injuries, we can only focus on what we do have. And now this is the schedule that we have, that we need to go to Manchester. We need to play well there and then we need to go to Wolfsburg. But of course, it, it's preference to have like uh, the other team does, to have no games at all, to train and just to prepare for the Champions League games. Yeah, it's unfair. Mercedes Bell there speaking ahead of this uh, huge uh, encounter on the WSL against Manchester United. It's all to play for, isn't it? At the top of the table.